In sports, there are some jobs that just seem cursed, that cannot be used to reflect the quality of those that take up the monkey's paw and are fated to fail. The PSG manager won't win anything outside of the I beat a part-time fireman league, the Madden box art star falling to injury or a decline in form, and the subject of this video being dressed in red, black and yellow while holding the role of team principal. The Scuderia see bouts of continued and often baffling decline after their much celebrated patches of success, often requiring a driver to dig the malign team out of the dirt, a la Schumacher or Lauda, which sees countless team personnel getting the chop after an Arthurian driver fails to arrive in time. Since the departure of Jean Todd, there has been such a culling, where characters are assassinated by Italy's national media while facing an unending tirade of clown memes from the international F1 fans. One such victim of the Ferrari curse, however, may well find himself back in the sports and possibly in a prime position to enact revenge on the team that did him oh so dirty. Want to know why the name Mattia Bonotto has been on everyone's lips recently? Could he really make a return? And if so, where and when could we see the ex-Ferrari man re-emerge? So first, a little bit of a background on Mattia within the sport, and more importantly, what jettisoned him out of it so viciously. Bonotto was a Ferrari man through and through, having joined the team in 1995 where he was part of the engine department behind Schumacher's period of dominance with the team, with the crowning achievement of that time surely being the F2000 2004, one of the greatest cars the sport has ever seen. So it's fair to say that Mattia knew a thing or two about designing cars. He'd be promoted to the head of engine development in 2013, followed by the chief technical officer role in 2016, before finally being handed the poison chalice in 2019. He oversaw three years which could be described as everything from an up and down affair to just flat out embarrassing. Rumours of internal conflict, especially with the Ferrari owner John Elkin, when partnered with the external Internal pressure would prove to be too potent of a mix for Bonotto to handle, leading to his resignation in the November of 2022. Truth be told, Bonotto was doomed from the start, with it surfacing that many key members within the team's ownership and management had never trusted him with the team principal role. And while he could be applauded as an engineer and a fantastic mind when it comes to working with the machines, I mean, just look at the F175. This is a true sign of Bonotto's capabilities. He can never quite match his prowess in a machine shed with the politics and man management that the team principal role requires. After the departure of his sponsor, Louis Camilleri, Bonotto was left with no friends in high places to back him, and the hounds closed in. So following his departure, Ferrari lumped up the cash to convince Bonotto to take an extended gardening leave, which has now since ended, which begs the question, what is next for the Swiss-born engineer? Well, according to the other half of the travel food show series that we never knew we needed, Gunter Steiner, his pal Bonotto is set to land on his feet, with the Haas team principal saying, I think he's in a good place. I spoke with him at the beginning of the week and I think a guy like Mattia will land on his feet. But what would landing on his feet constitute? Well, let's start with removing some possibilities off the table. Merck and Red Bull don't require his services, with them both actively distancing themselves. Any team in the midfield is either taken or comfortable with their current staff, like McLaren, or a foaming beast with so much inner turmoil that it would cause Bonotto to experience PTSD, like Alpine. Audi is an interesting prospect, with rumours of Bonotto rebuffing the team's approach surfacing, but not necessarily being substantiated, and have actively been called false by the German automaker. Another ex-Ferrari man, exporting director Cesar Fiorio, has hailed Bonotto as the right man for the job and someone who Audi would be crazy for letting get away. He also said that Ferrari were wrong to have let him go, with the exporting director having this to say. If I were to enter F1 like the Germans, I wouldn't let him get away. I would have kept him. I have always considered him a great technician. The F175 was, with Red Bull, the best car of 2022. The World Championship didn't come because of a lack of reliability, some bad strategies and some driver errors. Bonotto was a great engineer, but being a team principal is another job. That last sentence poses an interesting question. If Bonotto were to make a return to the sporting side of F1, would he helm a team again? Or would he be better suited to return to a role akin of a head of engine development or chief technical officer? If it's the latter, then Audi's rumoured issues of hiring the right technical minds to start their F1 tenure on the right footing necessitates that they secure minds like Bonotto's, as he has a proven track record of being a top-tier engineer and comes heralded as such by many that have worked alongside him. Another team 
that could consider Bonotto's engine implementation and design expertise would be a team-changing engine supplier's Aston Martin. While Roberto Fidelli has done a good job at Aston Martin as CTO, he could do with the support of an engineering mind in order to maintain success across a season rather than rely on copy-paste shock and awe tactics of previous campaigns. With either route, now is the right time to secure Bonotto as it will take him time to bed in with a new team before the new regulations get underway in 2026, something which may take him considerably longer having not worked with any other colour than red in over two and a half decades. However, if Bonotto is looking for work in a non-sporting capacity, a position may well have opened up at the top table of the sport with the governing body hemorrhaging staff as of late. Steve Nielsen's departure from the FIA comes as a real shock, having been in the sporting director's role for only 11 months and may present an opportunity for Bonotto to position himself within a position of power. Nielsen claims that his departure is due to the FIA not being willing to implement the changes he requested in order to improve race control operations, with his exit being the second top-level exit in the past month following the head of Commission of Women, Deborah Mayer. So why does this present an opportunity for Bonotto? Surely he'd want to stay away from a position where he'd be forced to remain impotent and unimpactful, especially one that seemingly just caused such frustration due to internal conflict that a man was unable to take a year of the position's dire standing. Well, it all hinges on the team's reactions and continued frustration with the head of the FIA, Mohamed Ben Salayem. The team's voiced major concerns, with some even claiming that they were dismayed at the exit of Nielsen, a man that the teams had all championed as being the right man for the job and someone that they trusted to make effective changes to the sport. It's not like this is the first unpopular move undertaken directly from the hands of the head of the FIA recently, with him launching that investigation into the Wolves a few weeks ago that baffled every team in the paddock so hard that they actually all agreed on something. Having been forced to back away from the spotlight due to some controversial statements that he may or may not have made in the early 2000s, which when paired with the sudden departure of Deborah Mayer and the attempted witch hunt against Susie Wolf does raise some alarm bells, the head of the FIA has only recently started showing face at F1 events in the past months. It's unclear whether he's going to be able to maintain a grip on the position or if the pressure of scrutiny that he is feeling from the drivers, teams and even Liberty Media will prove too much and cause a massive shakeup at the top of the governing body. This is where Mattia can claim a huge advantage, but we are in no way suggesting that he had helmed the FIA, however he could place himself in a position of huge influence that could give him power to dictate the future of the sport that he was so brutally maligned from. By taking the role of sport Sporting director, Mattia would be able to oversee the future technical direction of the sport, and who better to do that than a man with decades of experience in the machine shop, as well as a few years of dealing with the boneheaded inner workings of F1 teams and hypercritical media. If it were up to us, we'd want to see Mattia back with his shoes on the ground at the track. It's what suits his specialities the best, but it's whether he sees himself within the role at a new team. Something that we, nor anyone else, may have considered is that perhaps Bonotto is a romantic, and that no team other than Ferrari will suffice. But then again, he has the thing that all people in our favourite sport has, the will to win, and the drive to crush opposition, so perhaps that romance has been left behind after his betrayal, and has left unfinished business for Mattia to see to. So what do you think is best for Bonotto? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.